second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics also regarded as the Clausius statement. Clausius states that heat never flows spontaneously from a colder body to a hotter body. Of course, you cannot automatically fix a broken bottle, or you don't, in a proper manner, a broken bottle cannot automatically fix itself. It has to take a certain series of process to bring those broken bottles to give back a vase or a container which it actually looks like initially. So in any process that involves dissipation of energy, any process that involves the dissipation of energy is not reversible. Any process that involves heat transfer from a hotter object to a colder body or to a colder object is not reversible. In a simpler manner, it is easier for things to roll, for a body to roll down from a higher cliff to a lower surface or to a, a lower cliff or down the cliff side than for a bow or a body to be rolled up a mountain. The same way it is easier for a stone that is on the sky or a a, man, a mango or an apple on a tree to fall down then automatically start scaling upwards or start moving upwards in an opposite direction. Any of those processes are irreversible processes. And because they are not reversible, it is not easy for that process to be done in the opposite direction. It involves some, a certain amount of energy. In other words, Entropy is not really a state variable. It's not considered as a quantity, but rather it measures it measures heat dissipation in a system, or it measures a system's disorderliness. Entropy basically also regards or is also defined as the degree of the disorderliness or randomness of a particular system. Heat flows from objects of high temperature to objects at lower temperature because this process increases the disorder of a system. For that process to be pushed or to be scaled in an opposite direction, you will need to introduce a certain amount of energy. And this principle helps us in the creation of things like the fridge or the refrigerator or our AC, that is the air condition. Entropy, the mathematical statement for entropy states that the change in entropy will always, will always be greater or equal to the to the, to the ratio of the change in heat at a particular temperature. Every irreversible process increases the total entropy of the universe. Or a reversible process do not increase the total entropy of the universe. In some other case, we can basically state that Every thermodynamic process you can think of, in any thermodynamic process you can think of, with regards to almost every kind of system, entropy, the chances of entropy increasing is always in a positive side. There's always a higher chance that the entropy of any system, thermodynamic system, to increase, be it an isolated system, an open system, or a closed system. So, what is the general statement for the second law of thermodynamics? The general statement for the second law of thermodynamics is that the entropy of the universe never decreases. Some other books might state that this also means that the entropy of an isolated system will always 
in peace. Not just an isolated system, just as I said earlier on, a closed system, even an open system. The entropy of those systems tends to increase as time goes on. We have an example. Consider an ice cube. An ice cube whose temperature is 0 degrees Celsius and is slowly melting. What is the change in the ice cube's entropy? for each one gram of ice that melts. Remember, to melt each ice requires the quantity of heat, which is equal to the mass of heat times what? The latent heat of fusion of that particular process. And this energy is basically giving us 333.7 joules of energy. Here, we can basically use our previous mathematical statement for entropy, which gives us that the change in entropy is equal to the heat divided by what? Temperature. And the heat change here is the 333.7, which we determined earlier, for the amount of the ice cubes that are melting at a particular what? time divided by the temperature which remains constant throughout, which is giving us 273 Kelvin, because the temperature is normally converted during the calculation from Celsius to so degree Celsius to Kelvin. Okay? So from zero degree Celsius, we transform that or convert into it into Kelvin, which is now given to us as 272 Kelvin. And our value is 1.22 Joule bar per Kelvin. This backs up our statement earlier, which tells us that entropy is not really a thermodynamic property that is actually a quantity that is normally measured. Okay, it doesn't measure a specific type of heat, but rather it measures the dissipation of heat at a particular temperature throughout that particular system. We have another example. In this example, this example is with regards to the first law of thermodynamics. And here, consider an ideal gas is in contact with a heat reservoir so that it remains at constant temperature, and that temperature is 300 Kelvin. The gas is compressed from a volume of 24 liter to a volume of 14 liter. During this process, the mechanical device pushing the piston to compress the gas is found to expand an energy, releases an energy of 5 kilojoule, 5 kilojoule of energy. Now, how much heat flow between the heat reservoir and the gas? And in what direction does the heat flow occur? By looking at this statement or this question, we recognize that from the beginning, that we are considering an ideal gas, and this ideal gas is actually in contact with a heat reservoir. But the condition given to us here throughout that particular statement tells us that one, the volume is changing, quite all right, and the amount of heat that is measured. But one thing strikes there, one constant parameter, state variable there, is our temperature, which means that this process takes place under constant temperature. And when we go back to our conditions, thermodynamic process, whenever there is a thermodynamic process involving constant temperature, refer to that as an isothermal process. And during an isothermal process, if you recall, in our isothermal process, we stated earlier that our work is now giving us what? the NRT, or should I say, the change, the, 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 the number of moles times the, 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 the number of moles times R times T mean, or the natural log of the initial volume divided by our final volume will be our expression for our work. But how does this affect our overall mathematical statement for the first law of thermodynamics? In the mathematical statement of the first law of thermodynamics, we notice that our work, our 
our internal energy here becomes zero because in an isothermal process for an ideal gas the internal energy will be zero and when we go back to our question here we realize that since this involves an ideal gas which is in contact with our heat reservoir and this process is carried out at constant temperature it basically means that our process this process is done in such a way that the internal change in internal energy here will be equal to what? zero and if the change in internal energy is equal to zero it means that the sum of our work and our heat will be equal to zero and from here we can easily determine the amount of heat flows since the mechanical work done on that system is five kilojoule the five kilojoule of energy then the work done on that particular system since it's giving us work giving us five kilojoule of energy remember from our equation here the work will now be equal to minus q and our minus q will be minus five kilojoule per five kilojoules and this shows that our work is always equal to what the negative side of our what heat back to what which is in co consistent with the e earlier explanation i gave with calculations involving this condition whenever a thermodynamic calculation is done in such a way that the isothermal condition is kept in the sense that there's a constant temperature then the internal energy there is normally equal to zero. And when the internal energy is equal to zero, then the work done on the system is always equal to the amount of heat that is released by the system into the environment. Or the heat absorbed by the system is always equal to the amount of work that is done on the surrounding by the system. So in this case, since our work here is equal to 5 kilojoule of energy then our heat will be minus 5 kilojoule of energy and the reason why it is minus 5 kilojoule per energy is because there's going to be what from our expression when we move q to the other side it carries a negative sign but regardless back to our initial statement it basically tells us that it is consistent with the first law of thermodynamics which states that the amount of heat that is absorbed by a system or that is lost by a system in this case is normally equal to the amount of work that is performed on that particular system and with this we can simply go into our work the Gibbs free energy the Gibbs free energy is a measure of chemical energy okay and all chemical system tends naturally towards a state of minimal Gibbs free energy this gives free energy helps us to understand the spontaneity of a chemical process. The gives free mathematical expression is giving us G, which is equal to what? H minus Ts. And if we expand this particular equation in a differential form, it's giving us dg equal to dh minus T dS. Where G stands for the gives free energy. H stands for the enthalpy, T stands for the temperature in Kelvin, and S, our entropy. Now, this mathematical statement here helps us to understand, helps us to measure the Gibbs free energy of any system. And another important thing to note is that the Gibbs free energy helps us to tell when a system or when a particular reaction involving different systems is going to be spontaneous or is going to be what? non-spontaneous if the system if that reaction process will be spontaneous the gives free energy is negative will be less than zero if this point if that reaction is going to be non-spontaneous then it will be greater than zero if that reaction attains a form of equilibrium whereby it neither favors the continuum continuous process of that reaction or does it retard the reaction in a, a backwards in the sense that it leads back to the to favor the production of the reactant, we call that what an equilibrium state. And in an equilibrium, whenever a system attains equilibrium, the gives free energy is equal to zero. Now, in our next class, we'll discuss more on how to use the gives free energy 
Tupac.